Okay, welcome everybody to another edition of Think with a Drink. This is the weekly web show brought to you by the Aries Foundation for Financial Education. And today, Craig, we have a good one. This is the pre-retiree checklist, or this is the longest vacation you're ever going to take in your life. So have you properly packed for this trip? Uh, it's a road trip, since that's how we always go. You can hit us with the next slide. Real quick, an introduction to us. My name is Tom Alessi. I am the president of the Aries Foundation. I've been in financial services for almost 25 years. I'm actually a certified fiduciary. So that means whenever I give guidance or advice to anyone, I am always doing what is in their best interest above anything else. I want to bring my vice president. Craig, if you can introduce yourself. Sure. So I'm Craig Richardson. I'm the vice president of the Aries Foundation. I've been in financial services a little over 20 years now, and I specialize in working with families and individuals to help them define their financial goals and have a better relationship with their money. Next screen, the Aries Foundation for Financial Education. You can find us on the web. We're a nonprofit. It's ariesfoundation.org. So that's www.ariesfoundation.org. The mission behind the Aries Foundation is trying to help everyone have a better relationship with their money. Because whether you realize it or not, you are in a relationship with your money. Mm -hmm. And just like every other personal relationship that you might have, Craig, there's behaviors and triggers and things that cause us to act, well, a little irrationally sometimes when it comes to handling our money and our finances. That's all myself, Craig, the rest of the Aries Foundation team tries to do is help everyone have a better relation or a better handle well, on that right. emotion. Absolutely. So next slide. All right. So <laughs> there are drinks on this trip or this. I don't know that you're supposed to have a road trip with drinks. So we just shh, we won't tell. Depends on what state you live in. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're drinking today, this is called the Shaka. This is a West Coast pale ale, mm -hmm. not an IPA. This is a pale ale. Uh, this is pale ales are like the jack of all trades. Like so, mm. pale ale you could pretty much pair this with just about any type of food. You know, grilled meats, pretzels, pizza, that type of thing. Yeah. Uh, one thing with the West Coast version is West Coast usually means that they've dry hopped it, mm -hmm. so you get a little bit more bitterness, uh, mm. a little bit of piney aftertaste with it. But again, Ooh. this is the Shaka from Bentwater Brewing. Skull. Awesome. Okay, so when we're talking about a pre-retiree, mm -hmm. right? The number one question that gets asked to pre-retirees all the time isn't the right question. Okay. Okay? It's not the right question at all. You can go to the next screen because really what, what gets asked is when do you want to retire or at what age do you want to retire? Something along those lines. Like it's a timeline type of thing. Of course. Like, you know, when or, or, or what age. And that's not really what you should be asking. No. Right? The first thing you should be asking somebody is, and you can click the button because it will bring it up, how do you want to retire? What's retirement going to look like for you? Mm. Because in that sense, that's where we get the idea of, okay, here's what we're trying to do. Here's what we want to do. You jumped ahead on me. Don't do that to me. <laughs> you know how this can be sometimes. Keep right? my toes. Keep yes, my especially toes. when I've got booze in my hands. Yes. But no, the idea is, is when we're thinking about retirement, right, the idea is the concept of, of how do you want to try, is it, is it I'm going to stay where I am? Mm -hmm. Right? Am I going to age in place as it is known? And, and we've done stuff on that. You can check out the channel and see when we, should I stay or should I go? That's the episode to check out for that. But, or am I going to travel more? Right. Am I going to relocate? Mm -hmm. So all of these are questions and concerns that really you should be thinking about first because that's going to trigger or go through some of what am I going to spend or how am I going to spend it? Right, because the sta standard assumption is like when you go on Medicaid, right? Or when you can take Social Security, 62, 65, somewhere in that neighborhood is what people typically think about retirement. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As far as an age. Yeah. Right. Right, that gets into another one because that becomes, well, my goal is, and we hear this all the time, I'm going to retire at 67 or I'm going to retire at 70. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the reality is in today's world, people retire at about 63 right now, That's something like average. that. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So generally, it's about usually four or five years earlier than what somebody has expected. So asking the question of when do you want to retire, I, it does two things. <laughs> 
The first thing is, what happens is most people say yesterday, let's yep. face it, or tomorrow, right? You know, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, yep. we can't help you with that. Ten you know? years ago. Right. <laughs> I want to be out the door. I don't want to go back there tomorrow. Uh, but but the idea is it's it's much better to be thinking about this from a target of at what you would like to be doing, how often you're going to be doing it, and the way it's going to work. Now you can go forward to the next screen. So the reality check for everybody, Craig, is that in our industry, then when we say that we mean the financial services industry, has really been terrible at explaining retirement to most people. Sure, absolutely. Retirement is all about cash flow. Cash flow equals certainty, and certainty takes the pressure off of your money. If you don't remember anything else from this episode, mm -hmm. please remember that. Retirement is all about cash flow. Cash flow equals certainty, and certainty takes the pressure off of money. You need to have cash flow in retirement. That's what retirement is all about. It's all about making sure that there is income. That's what it's all about because that income, whether that's Social Security, whether that's a pension, however you got that set up, that's going to take the pressure off the rest of your money. Well, and that's the first hurdle, right? When people come in and talk about retirement, the first hurdle is, do I have enough cash flow to retire? Right. Um, and, and, and then it comes down to conversation and lifestyle and all those types of things. But that's the big hitter. You can't do anything without cash flow. And, and you need the cash flow to make sure that that money is coming in because that gives you the opportunity to then have the other funds available to do some of the other things, whether that's discretionary spending, whether that's liquidity, whatever emergencies come up. But you have to be thinking about this in terms of how am I having that money generate? Mm -hmm. Next slide. Because, and you know, for Craig and I, we always use buckets. So that we're clear, we're, that's our visual for everyone. We use buckets. You might be pools or bags or some other thing that you use. For us, it's buckets. So it's what's in your buckets, right? So you can hit the button and that'll bring up the first thing. These are the rules of money in retirement. And the first rule that money does in retirement is it generates income. Mm -hmm. In the visual there, income drives the car. Right? That's what you need beyond anything else. You've got to have income. Right. Hit the button. Go ahead. You were going to say? Oh, I was going to say, and, and maybe it's in the next slide, is you know, what are those sources of income? Which is another reason why people usually wait for Social Security, because that's a, a pension plan, a guaranteed source of income. Right. Right. Yeah, we get into a little bit of that. We don't get into much of it with this. Okay. But it's more about the, the, the rules and what happens. So the second one is liquidity. Mm-hmm. So you, your money is there to, to generate income. It's there for liquidity purposes, i.e. something comes up. Oh, something always the comes up. The emergency. The roof caves <laughs> in, the, the car breaks down, the pet gets sick, whatever the case may be. I need to have additional funds that were not counted for in my income that I am generating. Right. And the then the last one is maybe I would like to leave a legacy. I have beneficiaries. I have heirs. Yes. Maybe I would like to leave something for them. Everybody's different on this subject. A bill. <laughs> they say, no, no not way, I'm not doing I'm that. Not bill. my no. kids, none of that. But, but that's Check, ultimately. Please. I'm right. Yeah, I'm all done. They've, got, they've gotten enough. I'm all done with that. But, that. but really, when it comes down to it, what happens for most retirees, and this is why as a pre-retiree you need to be thinking about this, is that a lot of times, they're trying to use the same asset, the same bucket of money, as Craig was alluding to there, to do all three things. And you can't do that. You can't literally have money that's there to generate income and expect it to be available for the next generation, as an example. Absolutely. And, and, and this really gets into why a lot of people don't discuss retirement planning because a lot of advisors really want to talk about accumulation years, the time when you're actually gathering money, putting right. it together. They don't like to talk about distribution, and that's what Tom and I are talking about today. Now you know, you're going to retire, how do you get the most income and liquidity out of what you've saved and make it last and do the things you want it to do? And so that's why we're having this discussion today. It's more about liquidity and... Right, and it's about trying to figure out how you're going to set, as Craig said, set those buckets up. Right, because you really need to be thinking about this from the idea of, all right, I'm going to have one bucket that's going to generate my income. I'm going to have another bucket that's going to be set aside for liquidity purposes, like we just talked about, those emergencies or stuff that comes up. And then the last one, 
again, maybe I want to leave something to the next generation. Maybe I want to pass it on. Maybe I've got a charity or a cause or something that I want to donate to. All wonderful and good, but if we've spent all our money, there's nothing left over. Right. And the other reason we do it in this particular order is because first you need to have enough income to live. That's the most important thing, right? right. If you don't have enough income, there's no way you're going to have liquidity because you need that liquidity for the income purpose, right? So we solve the income issue. The next thing is liquidity. That's the next thing that has to happen. The emergency things that are going to come up because things are going to come up. Yep. <laughs> Every day things come up. And then we can talk about legacy. Because if you don't have enough income, you don't have any liquidity, there's nothing to leave anyway. <laughs> you're not leaving anything <laughs> at that point. So next slide. All right, so if you're setting up your plan, you're a, you're a retiree, and we're just setting this up as, as just, this is just basic information, right? So this is just high level view. And let's say you're 67 years old, and you've got a half a million dollars, Craig, in assets. Okay. And when we say assets, we mean that's generally your, your retirement accounts, cash in the bank, maybe after tax investments type of thing. Okay. Just a whole bucket Just of stuff. We're not really clarifying where that stuff is, but it's a half a million dollars and you're age 67. Okay. And you want to live for 20 years in retirement. Okay, cool. That's, that's standard, that's average life expectancy. So we're going to have you live to 87. And you need $45,000 a year to live on over and above your Social Security that you're getting. Okay. Okay, so mm -hmm. 45000 And you're going to get 9.61% on your money every year while you're in retirement. Done, I'll take it. And as you talk, <laughs> as you you can read anything, Google it. They will tell you, you know, hey, the 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 markets have done this, or the history of this has done that. You know, all of this stuff. That generally, it's somewhere around, you know, nine or ten or whatever percent in there. We'll go through the slide in a second as to how we got the nine point six one. But we're generally setting this up and saying, I got a half a million dollars. I want forty five thousand dollars a year of it to live on, and I'm going to live for average life expectancy for twenty years. What does that look like? So next screen, and this real quick just gives you, this is 20 years, or actually 21 years, because if you go 67 to 87, that's 21, actually 21 years. Yeah. Actually. Mm -hmm. So it's 21 years of the S&P 500. And it shows you year by year from 2002 to 2022, what that actual average rate of return was, it's 9.61 for that 21 mm -hmm. year time period. Yep. Shock, that's where we got the number from. Amazing. So there you go. So you can say, oh, look, I just put it in there and said, all right, that's how I was going to get my 9.61. So then I should be all set for the rest of my life like you were. Right, because I'm only taking the black ones. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't work that oh, way. Oh, OK. So now you can go forward to the next slide. Oh. And so this just shows you as it's set up on there. And you can see it at 67, I've got a half a million dollars. I'm taking $45,000 out a year. But the problem is because, as Craig just mentioned, there's fluctuating returns going on that what happens is, and if I believe if you hit the, hit the button again, you run out of money somewhere around age 82 in this scenario. So that's when I move in with my kids? Yes, okay. or you know, wherever in terms of <laughs> going through that. You're not going to be able to take $45,000 a year anymore oh. is, what, is what the issue is. And here's what happens. And just so we're clear with this with everybody, is this is the problem for most retirees, is that they're basing it off of this rate of return, whatever that number is. And you can say, oh, you guys just used this because it was, you know, it started with 2002. Honestly, you can start looking at these slices in just about any 20 year time frame. And the same thing is gonna happen if you have a down year, that means the market has gone down in the first like three or five years of, of mm -hmm. retirement. Yep. Because you're taking money out now. When I'm withdrawing money at the same time that the market is going down, it becomes a double whammy on my portfolio, and it's very difficult to recover. Right. We call that a sequence of return risk in the industry. There if you go. want to get the vernacular. Um, I wouldn't get buzzed at a collar for using vernacular. But <laughs> and you know what's really interesting? I just had a client the other day I had this exact conversation with. Okay. We were talking about income streams and how do you generate income streams. And he was saying, well, I can just do the S&P, get an average of 10%, and I'm going to be fine. Right. And we had to get into a conversation about sequence of return risk. Um, so it's out there. The myth is out there. And it's, it's not true. It's right. And, <laughs> and the problem with that, for, for again, 
with most retirees is because we're counting on this this bucket of investment income and and we don't know what's going to happen as you can see going over that 20 year time frame yes there's only four reds that show up but if you retired in any one of those four reds in the first two years your entire plan is going to get sidetracked yeah and unless you're tom brady you're only retiring once Right. Yes, <laughs> that, that multiple thing, or you know, bet favre in terms of going through that. So you want to get this right the first time. Yes, there's no do-overs. There's there's none of that happening. You can't. There's no mulligans when it comes to this. Is what the problem there is. But you got to go back to work or start over or stop taking money. I plan to go back to work at eighty. That was my yes. That was my plan. Yes. To get rehired <laughs> at that point. But the idea is that you can't go and take that at, this, at a specific time. You're just guessing, right? I, oh, I'm going to decide. Like Greg said, I'll take it on the up year, right? You don't know. And had you retired in 2022, you, your entire plan would have changed at this point mm -hmm. because 2022 was a disaster for everybody. Not only was it the seventh worst equity market on record, it was also the number one U.S. bond, the worst market in history in 2022. There was no place to hide. Well, the other issue is you can barely tell me what's going to happen this year, let alone 20 years into my retirement as far right. as the market goes. So you really want to be trying to talk about secured income streams in retirement so you don't have to be worrying about money when they're at the, at the most vulnerable part of your retirement. That's what it is. And that's really what it comes down to is trying to figure out, all right, like we said, what do I want to be doing? How much do I need to be spending? And how am I able to then set that as a basic income stream along with my social security. Now I've got this bucket of money or this income stream that's coming to me that's gonna take care of that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. My rest of my money, I can spend it now. I've got the ability to do that. All right, so now I can go to the next scene. <laughs> All right, so here's the things that are gonna pop up that every retiree, regardless of where you are, like if you're anywhere along the, along the journey here in terms of going through it, you need to be thinking about this. You can hit the button on the first one. I always go faster when I see speed bumps. I yeah, oh, okay, that's not a good thing. I was behind somebody who did that <laughs> the other day. Speed, I'm like, hey. speed. It doesn't say slow bump, it says speed bump. So the first one's Social Security, <laughs> right? So Craig mentioned Social Security. So here's the thing with Social Security that, again, a lot of retirees come to the reality or learn about is that Social Security can be taxed. Your benefit amount, depending on how much you earn, depending on how much you have coming in, could create a tax on your benefit. Now, it depends. There's a formula for it and going through it. But besides that, as Craig mentioned earlier mm -hmm. about you know, taking money early, right. if you take money early, you're still working, your benefit will be penalized. Oh, yeah. You definitely want to do the math on that before you keep working and take Social Security. Yep. And that's another one of these, as Craig said, one of these, these one-time things. Like, there's really not a do-over. There's, there's within the same year that you've taken or decided to take the benefit. If you can pay it all back, you can get a do-over. But after that, it's, you're stuck for the rest of your life. Yeah, because the rules keep changing. Ten years ago, you could do a do-over, right? You could At just buy 70, it back. Right. Yeah, right. But now you can't do that anymore. It took that away. That, that is gone. So you have to be thinking about this in terms of, of dealing with when do I claim Social Security and what is that going to mean for me, again, from a cash flow, cash flow perspective, because that's what retirement is all about. Mm -hmm. Retirement all about cash flow. Cash flow equals certainty. Certainty takes the pressure off of money. Next one, Medicare, another fun one, right? <laughs> so Medicare, listen, at 60, depending on when you retire, whether or not you have access to health care or not, at some point you're going to claim Medicare. A and B, A is free, B is a cost to you. But here's the thing with Medicare. Medicare premiums, there are surcharges that can be added on depending on how much money you take, mm -hmm. how much you're, you're generating in terms of income. And it's not just income. It's income plus my Social Security benefits that's taxed, plus my capital gains. And, oh, yeah, that fun and friendly thing, those municipal bonds yeah. that we were always told were tax-free. That counts when we're talking about the modified adjusted gross income for uh, Medicare. For the Medicare surcharge. Yeah, they won't get you any way they can, right? They're going to get you <laughs> any way they can. So just understand that, that both Social Security and Medicare, these are two pieces, two very important pieces for everybody, for every retiree. But if you're somewhere in that mindset, you've got to be looking at it. These are two pieces that you need to be thinking about and going, how am I taking this money out? Mm -hmm. Next one. 
Taxes. Yes, everybody loves taxes, right? How am I getting hit with taxes? And, and one of the concerns here when we talk to retirees about taxes is to understand that it's, it's tax brackets mm -hmm. and how that next dollar can literally jump you from a, a set tax to suddenly it, it, it costs you an extra you know 50% on your tax just by going from one bracket to the next. Right, because of the way Social Security tax works, right? Mm -hmm. So all of that gets factored in, and you really need to be thinking about, gee, how am I getting taxed on my stuff? Do I have different tax vehicles, i.e. strategies, whether that's pre-tax, that's the retirement account stuff. Right. Post-tax, this would be capital gains, anything that's gone in and now I've got growth, so I get ta capital gains on. Or Roth. Well, Roth, would that would be tax-free. Right. Okay. Yep. Right. Right. Well so uh, an investment <laughs> account would be would be capital gains, right? Right. Mm -hmm. I put it after tax money, and it grew. And now when I take it out, I'm only paying capital gains. But then, yes, as Craig mentioned, he jumped ahead of me on that. The Roth, which is tax free, same thing with a health savings account, another tax free vehicle. I jumped ahead because I was excited. I like free. Yes, <laughs> especially tax free. We like that. Uh, next one. And then this is probably the most daunting challenge for all retirees to be thinking about. And, and we, we're not going to end on the doom and gloom here, but this is kind of doom and gloom when you come right down to it. We're talking about assisted care, elder care, uh, long-term care. The current statistic last year from the Center of Medicaid Studies was that 70% of the population over the age of 65 needs some kind of assisted care. Mm -hmm. That's seven out of 10 people, seven out of 10. So the likelihood, unfortunately, for anybody watching this is more than likely if you're looking around or go into the office tomorrow, seven out of 10 of you are going to need some kind of assisted care. So the odds are greater I'm gonna need care than that I'm gonna win the lottery? I don't know about that. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did not know it was going to be me how you phrase that, but yes, that, that is the, the Well, because everybody thinks they're going to win the lottery, but nobody thinks they're going to need assisted care. Well, that's true. Right? Yes. Right? And the odds are completely the opposite away. Yeah. Um, and so, so with long-term care, I mean, it's just one of those things to understand because it sort of ties back to the second box, which is Medicare, because the government isn't going to take care of anything. I mean, that's the whole point. Right now, Medicaid, as it is set up, Medicaid will only cover in a skilled nursing facility. That's the only place Medicaid. You can't age in place. You can't age at assisted care. Will not get covered for that. Medicare, the one that's on the screen, won't cover anything. I mean, they cover the first 100 days, but honestly, it's like 20 days, and then you're co-paying the rest of the way for it. Right. So these are all considerations, all things that every retiree needs to be thinking about as you're putting your plan together and understanding, all right, wait, I got to be thinking about this from what my money is going to do, how my money is going to last in terms of dealing with everything, and then all of these other facets of, of all right, I got to take money from this box, take money from this, this bucket, from this bucket. Oh, wait, I can't trip Social Security because it's going to get taxed on that. Mm -hmm. All of these pieces we need to be thinking about. And then, oh, by the way, I want to make sure I'm leaving something for the next generation. So what you're saying is it isn't just as simple as making, getting the total match in my 401k. That's not solving retirement? No. It, Not at all. Okay, so it's a little bit more complicated than that, yes. <laughs> yeah, and you know, nothing wrong, again, I'm glad you brought that up, thank you. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with the 401k, with a retirement plan. They are one of the best tools for helping people save, especially those who aren't very good at it, because right. it's a set it and forget it type of thing, direct from your paycheck, great system. The problem is, like we just talked about, when we come to the end, now I've got this big bucket that's all taxable to me, and I really don't have a way to get around that. Right. It comes out, it's taxable. <clears throat> and that tax then triggers a possible tax on my Social Security benefit, mm -hmm. which then adds to and can possibly trigger a tax or a surcharge on my Medicare premiums. Now, two questions for you. They're both the same question at different ends. Is it ever too early to start thinking about retirement and how I set this up? No. The second question, is it ever too late? 
Uh, again, I, I'm going to say no on both, right? So here's the thing when we talk about that. So certainly for anybody, and you go to the next screen with this, right? So you, you really need to have that clear vision of the road ahead. Mm -hmm. So really it doesn't matter whether we're talking to somebody who's 15 or 20 years to retirement or whether we're talking to somebody who's like six months ago was supposed to retire type of thing. That's when you get it. They think about it when it already happens, right? <laughs> that, that this is really the idea and the conversation, but specifically in this case with the pre-retiree checklist, if you're somebody who is anywhere from say, five to 15 years out. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is stuff that you have to have the conversation on. You've got to be dealing with this on a regular basis because this comes very, very quickly. That road, it's very, very fast. Well, the other thing too, Tom, a lot of times people think, well, there's no way I'm going to be able to catch up. There's no way I'm going to have enough money for retirement. Right. You know what? Talk to a certified planner or a planner like us who can actually show you the efficient ways to do distribution in retirement. There are ways you can catch up, you can get there, you can solve the problem and do it from that perspective, income, liquidity, protection, legacy, to make sure you have all these components in place. But you need to start at some point. <laughs> Absolutely, right? That's part of it is you've got to start, start the you conversation. Gotta, you got to put the conversation in place. So next slide. All right. So here, as Craig said, one of the things that we offer to everybody, and like we said from the beginning, you know, our mission is trying to help everyone have a better relationship with their money. We set up, we're happy to have a conversation with anybody, right? Doesn't matter what we're talking about. We're talking about pre-retirees, we're talking about Social Security claiming, Medicare, any of those subjects. We're happy to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. That QR code, if you're watching this on new TV, if you're watching it on our YouTube channel, just hit pause. Take out the phone, shoot that QR code, it's gonna open up our calendar. You can at any time schedule a time that's comfortable for you, let's chat. See, because one of the things that Craig and I like to say to everybody is that you really can't get a second opinion with the person who set up your plan. Right. Like if you're not sure or I'm not clear on what direction I'm going, I've got this person who did it for me, well to ask them to recheck it for you, you're not really going to get anywhere. Unless they're a ventriloquist and they... <laughs> <laughs> you, you can, you can ask the dummy, right? Yes, ask the dummy questions <laughs> in terms of that. But so the idea is, is it, sometimes it just helps. Like just have a second opinion, just have a, a second set of eyes, take a look at your plan, get an idea and say, you know what, we're good, everything looks fine, you're good to go from here. Now, uh, last slide. All right, so please, anytime anybody has any questions, you know, feel free to reach out to us. The website, that's AriesFoundation.org. Again, we're a nonprofit organization. We're here to try to help everybody, try to give a, a sense of a little bit of more empowerment in terms of your finances and what you're doing with your money. You can schedule a time with us. You can see that's on the screen as well, so you can just type that in or copy and paste it. The email is available. That's info at AriesFoundation.org. And you can always follow us. We got plenty of social media channels out there. We've got Instagram, we got Facebook, we got LinkedIn. Please, uh, you know, the YouTube channel, like us, follow us, whatever you're supposed to do. I don't know what you're supposed to do. Know. I don't think you follow things. myself. But, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, but try, to, try to follow us, try to, try to you know, at least check us out and then like us or, or follow us. It would be greatly appreciated. And on that note, we are going to say thanks and have a great day.